I felt like I was almost standing in the battlefield of heaven, watching the armies of God and the armies of Satan. The ministry moved, the entire Latin American headquarters was moving to Caracas. And we got there, and to make a long story short, we all got thrown in jail. When we were being interrogated at midnight in a room with a light dangling from the ceiling and nine men with machine guns standing around, and the head of the Department of Immigration was interrogating us, and he'd ask us questions, we'd answer, and he'd say, that's not true, you're lying. And my wife said, no, I'm a Christian, I don't lie. And he said, hey, I don't want to hear any more of this Christianity business. He said, I don't like evangelicals, and I think there's too many missionaries in this country as it is, and I don't want you here. So we knew right there is a spiritual battle, that Satan was opposing what God was trying to do in the country. Basically, he said, at the end of my interrogation, he said, look, you are not cooperating with us. I highly recommend you cooperate. Let me remind you, you have no rights here. So I highly recommend you cooperate. And we're gonna throw you in jail until you decide to cooperate. Now I'm thinking in Latin America at that time, there was a lot of people that became what are called desaparecidos. A desaparecido means the disappeared person. In other words, somebody takes you from your house at midnight and you're never seen again. Maybe your body is found a few days or weeks or months later, maybe not. You just disappear off the face of the earth. And I thought, is this how you become a desaparecido? I thought, is this how it begins? And that night I prayed. I said, Lord, show these guys how great and powerful you are and how impotent they are by not letting us spend a single night in jail. And we spent the night in jail. And the second day, I wake up and I'm still there. And so I pray, Lord, show these turkeys how weak and powerless they are and how awesome and magnificent you are by not letting us spend two nights in jail. We spent two nights in jail. And the third day I prayed, Lord, show these guys how great and powerful. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. God, are you listening? Like, are you even there? Is this all just like a fairy tale that I'm following and believing? And it was a tremendous test of my faith because. There was absolutely nothing I could look at that could potentially get me out of there. As far as I knew, nobody even knew where we were. You just, they take us from your apartment and you just disappear. And um, so I had to look really deeply in my heart. Like, do I really believe this stuff? Do I really believe that there's a spiritual battle going on in the heavenly places? And that God is fighting on my behalf in some spiritual way? Or am I just following a fairy tale that makes me feel good and now it all came to a bad unpleasant end and I had to think long and deeply about that and that jail by the way it's not like American jails you know you just have a concrete floor and 40 men in this small cell sitting on the concrete floor like for days and weeks and they feed you once a day and uh, they let you go to the bathroom once a day and the walls were covered with cockroaches and the cockroaches would come down at night and you know, eat the crumbs and stuff. So the top of the walls are just black with cockroaches. There's moving there, so many cockroaches. And I call it cockroach cave. And it's, you know, it's, it's not a real pleasant situation. But I looked, had to look deep in my heart and say, do I really, really believe? And finally I said, I said to God, okay God, I believe. And I will trust you. No matter what the end result of this experience turns out to be, good or bad, I will trust you. Even though I see absolutely nothing that tells me he's there. I will still believe. And that was about the third day, I guess. And they brought a Bible in underneath the food. They smuggled the Bible in. So then he started standing up with his Bible preaching. He said, anybody mind if I read the Bible and share some thoughts? And like, you're just sitting there with nothing to do. So sure, why not? And we had a chance to explain to God's love to a lot of the people in the jail there. And after, shortly after that time, they take us back to the Department of Immigration for further interrogation. And my wife and I, she was in a woman's cell, I was in a men's cell. And as we're walking into the Department of Immigration, parking garage, my wife sees somebody walking out of a side room wiping something off his hand that looked like blood. And Don, my bride of nine months, said, honey, I just want you to know I really love you. And uh, I'm ready to go. Re yeah, she said, I really love you. And I'm ready to go to be with Jesus tonight. If it comes to that. So then they take us into, uh, <clears throat> into a side room and tell us to wait. And, um, and so we prayed, so I prayed. And as we prayed, I felt the power and presence of God like never before in my life, never before, never since. I felt like I was almost standing in the battlefield of heaven, 
watching the armies of God and the armies of Satan having this great spiritual battle going on. And as long as we were praying, the forces of God were advancing and, and winning. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I was playing I was praying in fluent Spanish. I didn't even speak Spanish very well at the time. <laughs> and yet it just flowed out fluently. I think God was just praying through me, the Holy Spirit. And we prayed very intensely for I don't know how long. And then all of a sudden, we just felt like, okay, we can stop praying. And a moment later, they came for us. And we get in there and they say, hey, uh, you're not supposed to be here yet. Go to this other room. So we go to the other room. And the guy says, um, why are we here? You, you know, you're in the wrong place. And after we get shuttled around two or three rooms, finally, they're having us sign our story. We had to write our story and sign it. And the guy who's doing it said, I don't understand what's going on tonight. All the top leaders are here tonight. They were going to finish off this case tonight. And nobody's doing anything. I don't know what's going on. And after we signed our story, they said, please forgive us. Please, please don't hold us our time. Venezuela isn't really like this. We're very sorry this happened to you, but just don't come back for a while. And they put us in a plane in Miami. So I think when all said and done, I really saw that God was with us. God was truly with us. Even when I could see absolutely nothing that showed me that God was with me, or that humanly speaking, we could get out of it. But I learned that no matter how bleak the situation, that we can still trust that God is with us. I thank God he delivered us in that situation. But even if he would not have, I knew that he was with us. So if you feel that God's not listening, uh, well, first of all, that's a lie. The evil one wants us to believe that God does not care about us. But that's also where the element of faith comes in. The Bible says that faith is the assurance of things not seen, the conviction of things hoped for. So even though we don't see it, we still believe.